I was the view of regretted air from a defender. The knob is about here. Hi folks, well at LR Workshop, I've just been on the Grenadier 2B Prototype 2 and I've got a bit of footage for you coming up after which I'll then give you my full insight into what I think about the vehicle. Uh, and this is kind of some of the train that we went across, which is basically like a country park in the UK, which I think is basically been most of the venues. And I think they've been given the remit to basically just drive around and just tackle and just throw it up kind of obstacles and, and terrain that, that doesn't look like it would be... Um, where a vehicle would go now this is fairly kind of tame this bit there are some more kind of muddy bits and a bit steeper bits and things like that that um, they tackled and there's open open countryside where they threw it around a bit more at speed um, so naturally this is a marketing event and it's not really designed to kind of push its limits I did ask the driver if they he'd found his limits he said kind of yeah but uh, you know they don't really want to talk about that so much but anyway before that here's some clips of me on the test drive. Solid vehicle. Alright, so I've come to see if I can get uh, some shots of the Grenadier with my extra wide angle lens from far, far away. <laughs> Down here. Typical. When they stop us, when they do their, their chat about various things, like setting up the vehicle, 
the terrain. Go on, go down, go down, go down. Oh. I can hear them pattering away in the distance. So he's not wheel spinning there, he's just going up really, really slowly. That's one of the steeper, you know, grassy slope. Not the steepest to go up, but that one's steeper. If this was wet, and so this is quite grippy, you can see the, the ground here is moist. It's moist, there's a bit of give in it, but it's certainly not, you know, we're in autumn here, so it's not slurry and slush, which helps. Um, apparently they're going off to a couple more weeks and they're going off to Dubai, so avoiding all the British winter, basically. Off in the sand. Uh, what else can I tell you that I learnt? So, the this prototype was built in uh, uh, first of June. It said it's number eighty something, and uh, this one has just been used for the prototype tour. It's not been used um, uh, for any kind of like out in the world testing or things like that. Um, and then they're going to do the next set of prototypes they're going to build about you know, 120 130 towards the end of October they're going to build those and then they're going to have another set of prototypes in the new year sometime and then final build when they start building customer vehicles will be in July so pretty much as they were as they're building them which uh, you kind of think is that you know is that long enough to build a vehicle but then you can build it in, in days I mean defenders were it was about lead time was about the quickest would be about three to four weeks from when it was built to when it was registered and in the in the customer's hands. So the Grenadier came this way. It came round here, it went up there, and that's where it came down. On the steep bit. You can see it's been driving here. This is the steep section that it came down. This is the first drop off. Came down there. And it gets steeper at the bottom. So that's kind of a test of its approach angle at the bottom there. There's some perspective with a defender. I'm not going to drive up it, but that's how a defender looks in the same same kind of obstacle. Seeing as there's probably going to be more people watching this video than actually under know who I am or subscribe to my channel, my experience is purely with defenders and 70 series Land Cruisers. That's all I compare this vehicle to, the Grenadier to. Um, so just so you were aware. Yeah, so I just uh, stepped in something, a sheep dropped. This is what I do to my vehicles, folks. Can the Grenadier handle that? Got it. The real question is, what do I think of it? It was uneventful in the sense that it did everything I expected of it. It obviously, from obvious from the way it's built with the, the approach and departure angles and and the wheelbase that it's it's capable and it is and I mean this was naturally a marketing event and in terms of what you ask it to do the conditions are very good so it gives the best 
view of the vehicle because they're driving on grass. It's relatively soft under under underfoot, um, so it's relatively soft. And you can go at speed, and it feels quite stable and smooth. Um, it's not too wet. You obviously got a lot of grip, and this hasn't been trashed completely. You see some of the wheel marks, but it's not mud plucking. There is a section just over there that's kind of probably you know that deep mud, but it's been squidged out of the way. It's not particularly wet at the moment, um, so it's never going to lose grip on this surface already. It's got all terrains on 35 psi. So, so in that sense, you know, I spend more time driving my Defender on road. But if I would, so you kind of lose the, the, the edge of knowing exactly what you can tack on a Defender uh, if you don't off-road reg regularly, which I don't do so much anymore. But what would happen if I sent my Defender, my older Defender, around that course? I think my old Defender, with all-terrain tyres, road pressures, diff lock-in, and using low range, would do everything the, the Grenadier has just done. It wouldn't... It, if you did it at the speeds the Grenadier did it at in certain sections, you would probably lift off your seat. That's probably the main difference. Like they were hitting stuff about 40 kilometers an hour, 25 miles an hour. I would not, I would not drive that fast typically off road. I mean, the slowest possible, fastest necessary kind of goes out the window because they're kind of, they're kind of throwing it at stuff because they want you to experience that. And actually, that's where it does very well. The suspension does very well. It doesn't give, it's not a harsh ride. You can throw at that stuff, even though I probably wouldn't throw at that stuff myself like that. Um, it did very well. But then it's, it's similar to a modern vehicle. They said at the beginning that people tell them it feels like air suspension. And, and yeah, it does. It feels like a modern vehicle would feel. Um, the old Defender is, is what the old Defender is. <laughs> It's uh, it's just different. It's what we used to, but the Grenadier is just is just modern from that perspective, and it and it and it works. Um, they were saying as well, and this this is something I learned. They tune the suspension for every market they sell the vehicle in, and that is a standard across the industry. No matter what it is, of vans and lorries and just cars, they tune the suspension for the countries they sell it in. So Belgium has a different suspension setup than the UK, and it's all to do with the roads. They said Belgian cobbles or whatever. They'll tune it differently for America. Los Angeles freeways, these are the example. They tune the vehicle suspensions differently. That was something I never, never considered or never knew before, but the Grenadier is the same. You will get a different suspension configuration in the UK as compared to what you would in Germany or, I mean, Australia, naturally. Um, they will have a different suspension setup. So that's really interesting to, to, to hear, actually. Okay, so now I think uh, let's go and have a sit down and we'll decompress a bit more. In my anachronism of a vehicle, so your door doesn't even shut. Sitting in here now, the Grenadier does feel very spacious. The armrest is quite far over. The, the B pillar is about the same place, it's about here, but probably. What's that? Three inches? About three inches further over. Is that three inches? My, my, my missus call that three inches? Um, further over. Three, yeah, probably three or four inches further over. I can reach here and I can touch the windscreen. In the Grandier, it was probably another four inches away. So that's a big difference. It's quite a lot further forward. The big thing I probably noticed driving off road is that the front wheels feel further forward. It's all to do with how you, you see the bump and you feel the bump and, and it's how you feel it through your body. Because a Defender, I mean the comfiest place in a Defender is about here, okay? And this is where it's kind of comfiest. When you get to here, you start, you know, it's to the extent to which you balance whether you feel the bumps more through the rear or through the front axle. And, the, you know, you start, the back of a Defender is quite an uncomfortable place. Really quite uncomfortable. Here on a 70 series Land Cruiser, double cab, it's incredibly uncomfortable. And even in a station wagon with stock suspension setups, it's not that very, it's not very comfortable at all. The front is actually quite good on a 70 series. Defender, I think, is better. But naturally, if you're exactly halfway between the front and the rear axle, you'll kind of get half of the loading of each. But you'll feel it half as much, but twice. That's the, the key thing. It feels like the front axle's further away. Therefore, the impact you feel through the front axle is dampened somewhat compared to this Defender. 
that was probably one of the other things I noticed from the suspension. So the front is further away. So this bonnet here, the bonnet on the Grenadier would be a bit further on, the windscreen's further on. The engine bay is probably about similar similar length. Um, so in terms of visibility, I mean, similar. I mean, it's still got quite a high rake, raked um, windscreen there, but that would be a similar kind of driving experience. Width-wise, probably sitting about the same distance apart as the, the driver or the passenger on here and the, the touch screen from this sitting from this seating position I would say the switch gear is probably slightly closer, slightly on slant. The touch screen is right there. It's quite easy to, to access it right there. And then looking down at all the rubbish I've got in my cubby box, the the, the, the knob is about here on there so the, the the height of this is probably similar to this cubby box it's a standard cubby box not been lifted at all particularly um, yeah you've got the switch gear here and then the lever so it's quite a bit quite far way down for your your legs it's probably about as far as a defender bulkhead in terms of leg room down there the 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 diff lock high low lever was right over here it was pretty much touching my leg in a kind of a resting position on the vehicle and then the, the gear stick was probably about here um, for the left hand drive so similar spaciousness down the bottom but up around the upper body upper body felt very felt very open headroom is higher actually there's more headroom in the Grenadier the seats were comfortable I was expecting them to be like sofa comfy which is what I've experienced in a Discovery 4 you know, you, you hear about them wanting to put in more expensive seats and because you're going to spend a lot of time in the vehicle, you know. It, but it, it, so it wasn't it wasn't luxurious and I wouldn't want it to be luxurious because it's the kind of seat you want to be able to get in and out of easily. And that's what it feels like. It's kind of firm, but comfy, but not too comfy in the base. And then the sh you've got quite a lot of... Uh, this one's collapsed here on mine, but... You've got quite a lot of support, so you're not swinging around so much. It didn't feel like I was swinging around that much in the vehicle. There was a grab handle there. There's a grab handle up here, and there's a grab handle here. I never used it once while we were off-road. I was just kind of sat with my hands down uh, if I wasn't filming, but I never felt the need to, to grab it. And they were going, you know, quite a rate over some of the obstacles. Yeah, so the seat feels, it feels secure, and it's got quite good upper body. The Defender here... This is this is a bit of a lumbar. It felt like there was almost no lumbar, which felt more comfortable. This kind of sticks in your back, and it kind of these are Puma seats. So these I feel I, I prefer these to the kind of pre-Puma seats. You've got more shoulder support up the top here. The Recaro seats felt like it had a lot of shoulder support. I mean, my bulk I'm not particularly big, about five foot eleven, but it felt like there was something not pressing my back here. Whereas on a Defender, it feels like I can feel it all the way up my back and to my shoulders whereas the Recaro felt like it wasn't pushing in my lower back so that was quite interesting um very comfy yeah comfy you could spend a lot of time in them I think um but not being too comfy not being like uber luxurious mm. the rest of the interior all this was basically just plastic you know the door handles worked and the windows worked and everything but uh, this was just all just plastic rather than being actual trim um, and I was surprised to see the switch gear, uh, you know, looked like the buttons and actually worked and everything had labels over it and stuff. And they had, you know, on his side, well, around about here on, on the left hand drive, they had, uh, you know, stop and go buttons and used stuff to sort of put, do a, you know, an isolator switch to start it, things like that. But anyway, for my troubles, I got some beer. I got uh, an iron on patch, presumably the logo. I've got a sticker. I got a t-shirt. And they embroider it for you. They say, would you like it embroidered? What would you like it embroidered with? So, oh, why not? While I'm there, get a t-shirt. Makes you feel part of the club, doesn't it? But, obviously, they've taken out a leaf out of uh, Land Rover's book. But, what Land Rover usually give you is a key ring. I've had that on the factory too. I've had that on the Land Rover experience I went on. They give you a key ring in a nice box. This is, um, I think, quite well done from a marketing perspective. It's just a generic t-shirt. But, but um, I've never seen that before. That kind of personalisation. It was quite quiet inside. I mean, the petrol, the engine—you really couldn't hear the engine that much. 
Um, we weren't going that fast, but you couldn't really hear it, and you couldn't hear the gear changes at all. You could not hear the gear changes. They were obviously very, um, they, you know, they, they've got this speech about the auto and how it's better. It's very hard to disagree with them. I said, has anybody, you know, questioned the, you know, the fact that they would prefer a manual? Why isn't there a manual option? And he said, no. But, you know, it's one of those things, if you ask, why isn't there a manual? They're going to, they're going to be like, look down on you and, it, you know, it's not the future. You know, you're, you're just, you just want it for, for nostalgia's sake. So it's the way the industry's gone. They want this auto, um, he talks about, you know, they talk about it always being in the power band, which is true. You've always got the torque there. The acceleration was quite good, actually. It was quite such a heavy vehicle. The acceleration was, was quite good. That was the, the petrol one. Transmission was a bit whiny. You could hear it a bit uh, at various times. Uh, you know, who knows? Could be a, a transfer box. I suspect it's the transfer box. The ZF is off the shelf, but the transfer box has been developed. Um, could have been low range. And it could, it could have been the fact that it was... In low range, no, I think it was in high range when we were just hearing that. But you never know; the gears could be more straight cut or something. It's a prototype, so I'm not going to base that on anything. But that was interesting to hear, and it, you know, it was clunking a bit when it went in and out of low range. There was one section where we went down steep, and he hit it quite fast, and he just tapped it left, which basically goes manual mode, and it locked it into first gear as we were going down. So a defender, you would probably stop and you'd have to stop or changing, change. he talked about dipping the clutch. You don't have to dip the clutch because normally with a manual, you dip the clutch, you'd lose traction and you lose control, whereas it was seamless. So he was basically driving down this quite steep slope and then was like, okay, I want some engine braking here. Just tapped it left on the gear stick and, it, and then it locked it in and then we got the engine braking going down. Um, and that's something you wouldn't be able to do in a manual. You can make those snap, you know, split second decisions quickly with it auto once you once you into it so it's a different style of driving it kind of promotes faster driving because you can because the skill he talked about you know and it takes you know you could do stuff in a vendor with a manual but it requires more skill of the driver and in my head i'm like well i like that i like having the skill of the driver and what i do i think you will still be able to run the grenadier and learn some skill with it and be quite good at using the grenadier but it will probably promote faster driving because you'd be quick thinking and, and doing stuff. And that is interesting because I've, I always, fast off road, fast off road driving is, mm, yeah, slow as possible, fast as necessary. It's one of those kind of things that's frowned upon if you're going to do proper four wheel driving is speed. I mean, speed increases risk of an accident, increases the risk of damage of the vehicle. So in a practical sense, you wouldn't come across a situation, particularly in fleets, they do not want people to drive fast. So there's an element there where where the skill of the driver coming from driving the vehicle fast may be counter to what we're used to or what we want from four-wheel drives or what we should from four-wheel I don't know. I'm, I don't have an answer for that. But... Um, yeah, that was probably the the big thing from the from the transmission. It's it's something less to worry about, but you can use it in certain ways. I still like manual gearboxes. That's what I know. Put it that way. It's what I know. So the auto would be something that you could learn. There are options there where you could learn it and bring in a different type of skill in terms of gear selection and usage of the transmission on the vehicle. But there, all all in all, yeah, a few things to think about. It met my expectations. It was fun. Um, I'm, I've said this before in some of my videos, like, I'm British, so if I crack a smile, you know, it's changed my life. Um, I'm not going to fly off the handle about this. I'm relatively calm and considered about this sort of stuff. But that's part of the appeal of kind of that understated element with, you know, defenders as they were. I hope this video was a bit useful for you. I know a lot of people have been on, uh, on the 2B prototype tour, and I've had various conversations with people who have been on it, but probably more of you have not been able to go on one and it's ending in the UK soon and they're going to other countries I think it's just started in Australia they're going they're taking I think this one this vehicle's going to go to Dubai or they're going to take the road show ne next to Dubai um, but anyway if you've got any questions then leave a comment below and um, uh, thanks for watching and hopefully the next time I'll be in a Grenadier I'll be driving it myself who knows um, 
Who knows on that? Thanks for watching. Bye for now. So basically, I wasn't allowed to film when he was talking. He said, tell me when you film and I'll stop talking. That's basically that. It's it's uh, the sort of thing you deal with in the UK. It's, I got introduced. Somebody recognised me. One of the guys there recognised me from Goodwood. He recognised me straight away and I recognised him. By the time I, you know, you do your, your bit where you sort of walk around, you sign your release, for, you know, your release form and, and things like that and uh, have a chat with a few people. And then by the time you get given, handed over to the driver, um, they're like, oh, the, you're the YouTuber. You make YouTube videos. I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> Am I a YouTuber? Well, OK, fair enough. You're the YouTube guy. Um, <laughs> so they're, they're on edge from that moment.